Hello, I hope whoever's watching this is doing well today. Um, I'm going to talk about the Vanguard Party. What exactly is a Vanguard Party? Okay, so, you know, I'm going to go really simple here because uh, you never know. Some people can be watching this, they don't know nothing about communism, socialism, any of that, you know? So, uh, basically, you know, we got political parties. Everybody knows that, right? So... Um, political parties, we use them to get stuff done. A uh, party is an or organization of people with political views, with a political agenda, uh, trying to spread their views and have power in the government. So uh, the Vanguard Party is the concept um, mainly in Leninism, because there's Marxism and then there's Leninism. I'll do another video on that soon. But um, it's it's mainly was developed in through Lenin, you know, and uh, you know, uh, a lot of his comrades in Russia, and this is the concept that in order for it's it's basically the science of revolution, you know, because the, the thing is, a lot of people they talk about revolution, you know, we saw the uh, the pretty dumb <laughs> Trump supporters try to storm the Capitol, you know, on January sixth. And uh, there are a lot of different types of uh, groups talk about revolution. But the thing is, uh, Marxism, Leninism is, is, one of, is really the only proven science of revolution that has successfully been able to implement a socialist state and um, take power o over the capitalist class in, in certain countries. So the Vanguard Party is a group of uh, workers and intellectuals who uh, try lead the masses uh, to revolution. The way they do this is, as Mao says, from the masses to the masses. So as I've discussed in my um, other videos, right, uh, there has to be a majority of workers in the party, you know, uh, because the they have the voting power. You know, you want the workers to have the voting power. You want the parties to represent all sectors of work and labor, you know, all different types of work, all different types of people in the country. So the, the Vanguard Party has to be mostly the working class, you know, uh, and but it can also have what they call intellectuals. These are dedicated socialist revolutionaries who their job is literally to, uh, you know, write, um, uh, do do whatever the party uh, needs them to do, um, you know, conduct revolutionary activity, and you know, ba ba basically their their job is to come up with the theory, you know, come up with proposals when their party has different congresses, because uh, Marxist Leninist parties they have co congresses too, and a congress is when you all come together, all of the party, and they use democratic centralism which is um, everybody, uh, everybody gets to speak and we all debate this, uh, this issue. And at the end of it, we, after everybody's done, had their spiel, everybody's done, talked it out, you know, uh, then we, you take a vote and whatever vote is reached by the majority, that vote is binding to all the members. So, so once a decision is reached, then, you know, everybody in the party has to act accordingly and honor that decision that is made in the Congress. And th th this is a big topic about China too, you know? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's very funny, you know, I shared it on Facebook, there's screenshots of these Western media, uh, you know, organizations and news organizations saying, oh, uh, China is <laughs> handling the coronavirus too fast. Oh, they're curing cancer too fast. Oh, they're eliminating poverty, but are the poor people happy? Like. Just the dumbest, craziest, craziest stuff ever. And there, and one of them even said, oh, the dark side of one party rule. <laughs> and so it's crazy because we see the hypocrisy of that in, in the United States. We, we, saw, we saw it so blatantly uh, last year. You know, so blatantly Congress would fight. You know, and, and, and even this year, when the, when the Democrats, you know, the liberal Democrats had, had the majority in both the uh, House of Representatives and the Senate, and they had the presidency, and literally there's no opposition to them, yet they still argue amongst themselves because they have private 
uh, interest and monetary interest, you know? So, and this two parties, two party system, you know, both part, both of the our parties work for the rich, you know, the dictatorship of the proletariat, as I talked about in my previous video is uh, a one party system, a one working class party with only a majority of workers and a minority of socialist intellectuals, but the workers are supposed to educate themselves on uh, the theory of socialism and communism as well and Marxism, you know, um, so this concept came about as um, a social scientific uh, way to to you know accurately uh, plan how to have a revolution in Russia. This this science uh, was created and developed as the revolution you know was starting and was happening in Russia, and it continues to develop because each country has their own national character and and their own culture. And own and their own, uh, you know, their own collective conscious, uh, you know, psyche, and so you know, it's been theorized that each country has to, the workers of each country has to liberate themselves. You know, there's a Trotskyism where they say, oh, we can have a global revolution all at once, but you know, in uh, Marxism Leninism, we recognize that there's a thing called internationalism, and just like the United States, uh, we shouldn't go around, uh, you know. Uh, basically being imperialist saying oh we're freeing these people <laughs> you know we're bringing democracy to the Middle East that's what they say you know but we know that's just imperialist you know and they're just doing that because they want that everybody else to conform to their socio-economic system of capitalism so with uh, socialism the workers have to rise up for themselves in each country you know we you can't it, uh, it, it doesn't really it it has proven to be somewhat effective to export revolution, but uh, that that that's a whole it's a it's a whole another video. You know, I'll I'll go into it another time. So basically, uh, oh, I'm just gonna say here, I actually started, you know, a Vanguard Party, United States Communist Party, not the the CPUSA because they're not real communists. The CPUSA. Um, I started one, it's called USCP, and the reason at first for a while, I was like, yo, uh, you know, I gotta find, you know, a real Marxist-Leninist party, you know, and I looked around and, you know, I, I didn't really find one. Uh, now I've heard of another one after I already created this party that they might be good. Uh, I forgot what it's called though, but basically I was inspired because I've uh, seen the recent events in India and there's many communist parties in India, but they're all still working towards the revolution. So, you know, e even if uh, even if things are divided, you know, for a minute, you know, we need a one party system to have a, a true transitional state. But at the same time, progress is progress. You know, e even in the, in the Russian Revolution from for many decades, there was different. There was the Mensheviks, the Bolsheviks, you know, there, there was even many other political parties completely separate from the uh, the Social Democratic Party, that's what the Communist Party was called back in the day and uh, before the revolution in Russia. So, you know, j j just because I, I feel really, um, I feel really called to to do this work and to participate in, in the, uh, the building of proletariat power. You know, I've started this party, but I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be no leader or nothing. You know, I, I'm just trying to bring people together. You know, a few people have expressed interest, so, I'm I'm gonna put a lot more work into it. I'm gonna put the website down in the description for the for the party I made. But basically, how how the party's gonna work, right? First of all, we gotta have members in all unions. You know, uh, the party should be involved in all unions and all uh, spheres, uh, sectors of work. You know, construction work, service work, factory work. Anywhere where there's proletarians, you know, where there's wage workers, uh, the part the party has. Uh, we, we need pe people in those things to be in the party, so the party can truly be connected with all the workers, you know. So even further than that, you know, I, 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 I you know, because mostly uh, in Lenin's time they talked about the unions, 
and in modern in the United States today, there's not a lot of unions. In, in the state where I grew up, mostly, you know, I'm from New York. I grew up in North Carolina, right? North Carolina, <laughs> a lot of people believe that unions are illegal. You know, I believe that for a while, but apparently they're not technically illegal. But there's like this law where it's like uh, it's it's basically you you can't start a union. You know what I'm saying? And, and even if 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 you could find a way to just manipulate the the weird law they have written on it, and many states in in the southeastern United States and many conservative states, even if you find a way, they'll fire you if you even talk about a union. So. I think it's important to um, connect with all, you know, maybe even start unions in these places, you know? So, yeah, so basically the party has to be connected with all the workers. And it has to be, ha ha and it has to be people that are truly dedicated to the science of Marxism, Leninism, the science of revolution, and having an uh, actual proletarian revolution, a mass movement in the United States. That's what the party has to be. Because, you know, as I've explained in my previous videos, uh, the science of revolution is it, it's so simple once you say it that, 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 that it's just crazy how simple it is. Basically, you just need the working class, the masses of people to all come together to a collective conscious understanding of the material conditions and the class nature of society and uh, work towards productive action. You know, uh, to get there, theory, practice, theory, practice. You know, as as Mao talks about, very, very good. You know, basically, we gotta analyze the situation, and and the current situation in the United States, uh, I think it's pretty obvious. There's a lot of people who don't even understand com communism or socialism, and even if they th think they do, they really don't. They think communism is some uh, one person uh, autocratic totalitarian dictatorship you know dictatorship that they uh that they tell us you know there's so much propaganda and indoctrination in this country that where where e even though i see a lot of progress especially last year we had a lot of progress in protests and movements a lot of those movements were very small and concentrated to certain areas you know even though a lot of cities uh participated in certain movements um and and also they were very infiltrated by bo bourgeoisie and bourgeois for supporters you know, because uh, some of these mo movements did not uh, recognize the class struggle. They only focused on, on uh, you know, the, the, the issues that come forth out of capitalism. Capitalism is the reason, you know, this, this, this uh, socioeconomic structure that allows people to exploit others and use others, you know, to profit. Th this is the reason why racism and and all and sexism and and all these things persist to such a high degree you know we acknowledge you know after a socialist revolution there are still going to be some of these things but we can't make real productive progress in these areas until we we until we make progress towards ending capitalism Capitalism is a, it's a socio-economic superstructure that influences our everyday lives, no matter if we recognize it or not. It's always affecting us, especially in this country, United States. I have a lot of conversations with friends, right? And so often I tell them, I'm like, that's cap it's capitalism. That's why, you know, that's why, that's why you're going through this. That's why you have this problem. And sometimes <laughs> I don't think they get it. Really, I honestly don't think they get it how many little things and big things in your life how many little 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 things all add up all collectively if you go back to the root of the problem it's capitalism so the vanguard party is a political party a revolutionary party of revolutionary socialist and socialist workers so I hope, I hope that was a good enough explanation. If anyone feels like I didn't explain enough or there's a certain aspect of it I need to explain better, you know, definitely go down in the comments. Um, I'm going to post this link to this book I wrote. And like I said, The Political Party. I'm also going to post this book, I mean, this uh, link that has a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, source, sources and inf information. It's called Socialism in the 21st Century. And it's uh, some other activists that compiled all these sources and all these links to better understand the true nature of uh, socialist progress uh, across the world. Thank you. Uh, I hope you have a good day or night or whatever.